So if you have an iPhone with this problem where it says uh, problem with detector with true depth camera, face ID has been disabled, there's a new method to repair this. This is using the JC dot projector special chip. This allows you to repair the dot projector causing this error. And you only need one IC to cover pretty much all these models. Previously, you needed to have a unique cable for each model, which made it a pain to handle because you had to have all these different SKUs for all the different models. Now that this simplifies that process. And we're gonna use the JC method using this programmer to repair it. But I also wanna go over some troubleshooting steps for Face ID using the JC Repair Assistant software. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we wanna do is figure out what exactly is the problem. Um, basically, if you have the true depth camera error, it's most likely a dot projector, but also I wanna show you guys how to figure out if it's a dot projector or if it's something else causing problem with your face ID. So the first thing you wanna do is get the JC Repair Assistant software, which you can get from jcidtech.com. I'll link this down below. I'll put a direct link to download the software. Uh, this is in Chinese and their US uh, English website is not loading for some reason. So I found this and you go to download center and then here there's a button uh, which tells me it downloads the JC repair setup exe file. So download and install that. And basically that tool brings you to this. You do have to create a free account to log in and access this. But once you're here, you wanna to go to this button here. This is free to use and anyone can use it. Although I do recommend uh, only technicians use this. And basically what you wanna do is go to read phone. And when you have a phone plugged in like I have now, you see it pulls up all this data about the phone. So one of the things for Face ID is this bottom section here where it says lattice, distance sense, IR cam, ambient light. These are all essentially Face ID related or other sensors on the phone. And the more, most important ones is the lattice, which is the dot projector, the direct distance sense, which is the flood illuminator on the ear speaker flex, the IR cam, which is actually uh, this yellow looking camera here on the left side of the uh, front camera assembly, and then the ambient lights. That is the little rectangle square on the ear speaker flex. So basically, uh, if you can read all four of these numbers, then that means all of the sensors are being detected and they're good. Now, let me show you an example of another phone. This one also has a true depth camera error, but I do want to show you guys this, all right? So I have it connected and you see how this one for the distance sense and ambient light, it's blank. That is because those sensors are not being detected. So this is whether it's a low quality aftermarket part that's plugged in and not being detected. Or, as you can see here, I actually have the ear speaker flex cable unplugged. So the software cannot read those sensors. And then you know, okay, I know the distance sense, which is the uh, flood illuminator and the ambient light are not being detected. Let me check the ear speaker flex to figure out if that's the issue. Now, if you have a case where the lattice is not detected, then you wanna check the dot projector. Maybe the, the flex is, is sliced, maybe the sensor itself is broken. I actually just had two of these where the actual sensor like from the back was hit and it broke. Um, also same for the IR cam. So the three main sensors that are needed for Face ID is lattice, IR cam, and distance sense. If any of these are not being detected, then Face ID is not gonna work. Now inter interesting thing about the IR cam is if you have that unplugged while you do a restore or an update, the IR cam value right there will actually disappears. So it'll read as if it's not plugged in. You do have to flash, yeah, you have to plug it in and flash an update or restore it again while it's plugged in, then it'll come back, assuming everything's good. Now, if it, the cable's ripped, the sensor's bad, then it might not read and that's why it's blank too. But also, this doesn't tell you that this is the original parts. These parts cannot be replaced, so if, if it does read, but Face ID still does not work, then you have an issue elsewhere. It could be, it's not the original parts, the sensor's not working correctly, like we're gonna fix today. Also, you, what you can use is 3U tools. So on 3U tools, if you uh, plug it in and let this load, click on view verification report. And this is one way you can tell if the front camera assembly has been replaced. So if you see that your front camera 
does not match and it gives a, a test result giving an error or, or mention that it's been replaced, then there's a high probability that the IR cam was replaced because this whole assembly is one piece. So the front cam, if that front cam is not original, most likely neither is the IR cam because they're like all one, uh, one piece together. So this is one way you can also check if your front cam is not original, high chance you don't have the original and then you can't really do anything because of the way Apple set up Face ID. So I just wanted to give you guys some of, some of those tips on how to use the JC Repair Assistant software and the tools for checking this out. So now let's actually do the repair. All right, so for this case, we have a problem with the truth of the camera. So let's check that out. Let's get the sensor out and actually go through the repair process using this new method with this IC. First is we gotta turn off the phone and get the sensor out. For iPhone 11, we got to remove two screws and then we got to remove this plates. All right, so we gotta get this whole thing out. The only way to really get there is unplugging this. This is the actual dot projector flex. And then I mentioned this is an iPhone 11. Each model is gonna vary on how do you get this flex out. So for iPhone 11, this is how you do it. Uh, actually, iPhone 11 is one of the easier ones to open because the flex is not going under the battery, which many of the other models do. All right, so this is the IR cam, front cam, and dot projector, true depth camera lattice, right? So let's plug this screen back in. This is actually part of the process for this new method. You don't need to plug anything else in. You just gotta power it on. Obviously have a screen plugged in. All right, so I'm plugging this into the computer. You'll have to have two different uh, cables, one for the programmer. So this is a JC, there's not even a name on here. This is a V1S, the original version with the dot projector board or module. And then this is the, this is the dot projector here. And if you follow, it's kind of hard to tell, but if you follow the dot projector from here and follow the flex, you'll realize is this flex here. Uh, this specific model is a little tricky because it has multi, uh, multiple cables here kind of stuck together, but once you separate it, you'll, you'll see how this cable is a dot projector. And if you look at the programmer, find iPhone 11, which is this one here, and you can see how the cable has to come in from the right and then down. So match that, plug it in, and then don't, don't push anything here. So now we have the phone plugged in, and this plugged in to the PC with the dot projector there. Then we go over here. So for this, we gotta go to a different uh, page here. We go to repair fitting, and then you'll see my programmer is detected and you click connect. Now your device will auto update if you connect. If you actually just open repair fitting page and it detects your JC V1S plugged in. So if you saw my previous videos and you're using, if you're still using the method with uh, the replacement flex cables, you may not want to update it. But if you're, going 100% into this method with the IC, then it doesn't matter. You actually kind of have to update it. So uh, you can see here, I'm connected to the actual uh, JCB1S. On the actual JCB1S, you'll see it just says online, so I can't really do anything on the device itself, but that's fine because we're now gonna use this. So on the left side, you can see the phone that's detected, and on the right side is the programmer. So we're first gonna do a test, which is labeled here as detect. So basically, if you get abnormal down here, uh, SADB, then we just go through this repair process. If you get, basically, if you get any of these, any abnormals, then you're gonna have an issue with the dot projector. Uh, usually, uh, sometimes if you have an error on one of these, it might be something else like the actual sensor itself is damaged or the cable is damaged or something like that. But in like 
I would say a good 99% of cases, you're gonna get this exact uh, screen. And then what you gotta do is, you gotta make sure your phone is detected here. If it's not, unplug it and plug it back in. Uh, if anything, you know, restart the software or something. But basically get this uh, detected and then ignore all this because I actually have all this unplugged right now. And it doesn't necessarily tell you that these sensors are bad. I just don't have them unplugged, so it gives an error with abnormal. So uh, now that we confirm the dot projector is bad with these down here, you want to click cloud backup. Now you get this uh, pop up here. It's confirming that the device you have plugged in, the serial number is this, which I always just presume is correct, unless you have multiple iPhones plugged in, which you shouldn't have. You should just have the one you're working on. And then on because of my screen is 4K and the the text size is really big, uh, it kind of covers the button. But the button right here below it is the OK. And then just save. Now you have the dot projector original data saved to the computer. And now you can start the process for this repair. Now, after we do everything, we swap over the chip and everything, then we want to click right from AI, have the phone plugged in, and then it'll program the new chip. All right, so now let's go under the microscope. Actually, let's take a look at the jig I'm going to be using. This is the Mantz face, head, face lattice repair fixture. It is an amazing jig for face ID repairs because it has a little clamp here to grab the dot projector, has a jig here to hold the sensor down. It has a reballing stencil, which I don't have attached right now. It's uh, separated because I don't really use it for this specific job. But you can see the jig and it's heavy. So it keeps the, everything in place while you're working on it. And essentially what we do is we got to get the flex and the dot projector out in one piece, place an IC, then put it back and then go through that whole process. So let's go, uh, now let's go under the microscope and you can see that this jig lines up perfectly. Now on some models, it doesn't line up perfectly. So just careful with that. Um, I think the 11 Pro and Pro Max it's, it doesn't have a cutout for a bracket that's on there, which is kind of annoying, but it still kind of fits. So just kind of do your best. And then we're gonna hold the disassembly like that. Let's get rid of this sticker here. Now, I personally don't put this back, but I don't know, up to you guys if you wanna do that. All right, so here's the dot projector and then the flex goes this way and then out. So we got to first uh, clear out the underfill that's under here. So I'm going to start off by taking off the sticker. Now it's up to you if you want to cut the shield. I learned how, how to do it without removing it, but you know some people might find that easier. So what I like to do for cleaning the underfill is about Let's do 225 on my hot air, and then I'm gonna use this blade or this tool to come underneath and clear out some of that underfill. Now this is a very, be careful with this, uh, with this step because the front camera is here. If you overheat that, you can damage it and now you have to replace that as well. So let me know if you want a video on how to replace the front cam only. Because I've had to do a few of those myself. Essentially, I'm trying to clear out the underfill that is holding the dot projector and the flex. So I like to just keep the heat on the dot projector and still kind of be gentle because there's obviously flex cables here and you don't want to rip them. All right, so I think I got everything. You see like the little sheets of stuff that comes out. All right, now to remove the sensor out. So essentially we got to get in between this crevice here with a sharp blade or tool. And we got to separate this section from this uh, lens down there. And the best way I do that is using this steel block, I stand it up, and then I stand up the jig 
so that it's at an angle. That way I can see what I'm working on, but yeah, it's being held down in place. And for this, I still use the same uh, 230 temp, and make sure you keep your temp, keep the tip over the sensor only, keep it moving, and warm it up a bit. You actually see some of this underfill stuff here. And just keep moving and essentially put your blade in between and push down. I think I chipped the lens, but that's fine. Nothing really happens in that area anyway. So I'm at 225 Celsius. Oh, here it comes. Coming off. Oh, there it goes. All right, now this one's kind of tricky for iPhone 11 because the way the flex cable is kind of gets stuck over here. So you got to make sure not to damage that. So what I do is I wiggle the cable and kind of curve it up and around that part. And push the, from the little block there, you can push it out. But be careful, for this method, you need the original flex on there. So don't damage that. And there it goes, out. Now I, now I see why it was so tough. I forgot this model has a sticker here, so that makes it a lot harder to remove once you uh, break the sensor off the glass. So, oh well, let's just leave it like that for now. So this is what's left behind. There's like ch uh, chunks of little Piece of that glue that kind of holds the sensor in there. So ideally you want to keep it intact. The little, this glue here, I don't know if you guys can see that. But that provides like, like kind of like a spacer in a way for the dot projector and the lens. Now if, if you do break that all off, and you lose a big chunk of it, they do sell replacement gaskets, is what they're called. I believe Ender Gadgets either has them or will have them in stock soon. So uh, I'll link those in the video description as well in case I do uh, find that they have it. All right, now we gotta work on this section of it. For uh, Let's just double check. Uh, there's no damage to the little gold uh, wires there. All right, and then this is an awkward flex cable, so just squeeze it in here as best you can. And now the next thing to do is remove these three components. So if you saw my other video on the I2C method, it's basically the same thing, except JC has a different uh, type of chip. All right, oops, it went a little too high. So we're gonna use, let's use 260. We're gonna use 260 to clear the underfill and to remove the components. So step one is just clear some underfill. So using a sharp number 11 blade. And I recommend always uh, push away from the lens or the sensor over there. I forget what it's called. And then rotate this regularly. So right now I'm pushing down and to the left away from this area. I push down and to the left. Same over here. Always away from the special parts, the valuables. And down, and down. 
All right, so now let's go in for the removal. And essentially just push, kind of pry it up. Doesn't matter, we literally don't need them. You don't have to be gentle. Plus this uh, surface that these are on is really tough. It doesn't break easy. There you go, and now let's clean up this area. Clear out all the underfill on the edges because the chip is huge and there's very little room. All right, clear out this chunk of whatever is here. Now if you do damage some of these gold pins, you can just jump. So from here to there, 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 there. Now you can kind of see where they go. You don't have to replicate the same number of wires. If that, if there are multiple wires there, as long as one is still connected, then that's still good. All right, so my recommendation here is I actually went through the process. Uh, I've gone through a few of these repairs with this method already, and I'm gonna show you guys some tricks to this method. Cause it's slightly different than the I2C method. So the chip itself does not necessarily come reballed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tin the pads but also I'm gonna wick them flat. But I'm gonna tin them so they can have some solder on there so it's easier to solder onto once you are gonna install the chip. So I tinned all the pads. And then I'm gonna try to wick it flat. Come on, let me go slightly higher on my temp. Let's do 290 for now. And also you can start off by melt or heating the wick braid by itself. So it's extra hot and then it'll pick up the solder much easier. Alright, that works. Now it doesn't matter if you got flux all over the, the sensor. Let's put a little more. All right, so now here's the trick. Um, well, first let me show you the IC. So these come in one, five, and 10 packs. So I have a 10 pack here. So the tricky part is not losing the IC, trying to get it out of here. So I actually lost one for a few minutes. I was looking everywhere. Here, let me drop it here. So what I like to do is kind of roll this back slowly and then flip it over. All right, so this is what, what a brand new IC looks like. Now I do wish, uh, JC, if you're watching this, well, I hope you are watching this because you guys sent me this. Um, I do recommend I would, it would be nice if you guys had this reballed into nice solder balls. This doesn't look reballed at all. It's kind of just uh, random. But that's what the chip looks like. And you'll see the difference between this and the I2C chip is one solid chip. Whereas the I2C one is actually like a flex and then a chip on top, which can be easily separated by accident. So this is all one solid uh, piece. Now, uh, let me show you guys another one I have here that I was, that I messed up, that I started uh, playing with it. So it does have a chip here, and then you can see there's like a gap here. So it looks very similar to the I2C one where it's a chip and then there's like a cap or something here, and then underneath the flex. So actually, it wouldn't be surprised if it's the exact same thing, except this one's kind of filled in. So you kind of see what the chip is actually 
made of. There you go. All right, back to the new chip. All right, so let's see if this works. So the key to this is really uh, this grid of pads goes to here. So just orient it that way. So the dot goes to the bottom left from this angle. And then, well, before I do that, one thing you notice is take a look at how close this row of pads is to the end of the chip is pretty much at the border so keep that in mind when you're placing this so if you look at the pads over here we actually see some debris clear that out so you see where the pads are so you do want to don't push it all the way up against the left have a little gap there and also, depending on the model, some have a bunch of underfill here, so you might have to clear out a lot of it uh, to get the chip to sit in place and fit. Uh, if, if anything, you could always put the chip and try to see how far you have to carve out uh, the underfill, but it's kind of like that. So on this side is like about there. All right, so let's go with this. So I'm gonna use the same 290. I essentially just solder the chip just like any other BGA chip. Make sure it doesn't fly away. And actually, I'm soldering on. You could also consider pressing down so you can know it made contact with the pads. All right, so that looked like it was installed. It was really quick. There's a tiny IC on a flex cable that has little to no thermal, well, it has very little thermal mass. Now we're gonna use ISO to clear out all the, all the flux. Do this while the, the sensor and everything is still hot, so the flux is still watery, so to speak. All right, now get this out. All right, so now we're gonna plug this back into the programmer, like so. So now it has a new chip. We have this plugged in, and you can see it's detected iPhone 11. Now we go back to the PC, connect, and then we want to detect. So basically detect means test. Do we get any errors? Normal. So it says here normal, 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 normal. If you get any errors here, usually bad placement of the IC will uh, give you an error somewhere around here. Um, if the IC itself gets damaged or chipped somehow, then that could also cause uh, one of these errors and it'll give you something. So this is what you should get. If you get anything else, double check your work. So this is all good, tested. Now we gotta write and program this chip. The only way to program it is while it's on the flex like it is now. So iPhone 11 is detected over here. Uh, so it's gonna pull up the right data for this device and we're gonna click write from AI as detected. Uh, this data from this device and we're going to click OK. And then here, uh, material is suspected to be counterfeit and shoddy. Not strictly official supply, prohibited to use. Oh yeah, that's awkward because <laughs> I got this from JC. Let me try it again. Okay, um, wow. All right, give me one second. All right, so this is really weird. Um, now it's saying the clipper chip is abnormal. You can see here, abnormal. I literally didn't touch anything. I just kept trying to write from AI, but it's not gonna let me now because there is an error with the sensor. IIC breakage. So this is actually something I ran into when I was 
trying uh, when I was first trying these before recording a video um, it was giving me similar errors so let me just try another IC I mean I literally didn't touch it and one thing I will say is the I2C one never gave me any of these issues but the chip itself looks fine um, actually let me let me try to reflow it I mean as you guys saw it literally was testing fine I ran it multiple times and then I was getting the error about the uh, shoddy or replacement or basically claiming it was counterfeit which it wasn't right, let me reflow it Press down as well. Now, I don't recommend you guys try to reball this. It's very, apparently, it's a very fra fragile chip. So, if you try to reball, you could damage it and then same issue. So, I did get some solder balls here. Let me grab them out. Let me drop some ISO, which also helps uh, pull it down let's try again iPhone 11 abnormal yeah so let's pull a chip see if anything looks weird this is not a good look JC maybe your counterfeit measures are gonna backfire on you because I'm gonna post this so now we'll reach out to them for comments maybe I can add it in later but very uh, very weird now all the pads do look like they soldered on one thing to look at is really the pads here connect to these pads these two basically jump uh, these two like the old method and then this is just blank. So this all looks soldered on right. Nothing looks fishy about it. So I don't know what exactly happened. So let's just try another IC. Now if the failure rate is this high, you know, I might recommend against it. But I gotta show you guys the truth of what happens, you know, I'm not also not getting paid by JC for this. They just uh, provide me the free sample so I can make a video on and technically a tutorial. All right, this is a brand new chip. I see this one's good. Maybe they just need to improve their quality control. Same thing, the dots goes on this corner. All right. Just like any other I see, you wanna bump it whenever possible just to see if it snaps back into place. Now this one's a little trickier because there's like literally no space. So I'm just gonna go like that. I wonder if pressing down on it damages it. I don't know. Another funny thing is uh, a lot of these tools from China, they rarely ever have any tutorials. So you kind of have to just figure it out or whatever tutorials they do have that are very uh, minimal information. They don't actually walk through from beginning to end. Let me get the solder ball out. Oh, this is integrated. But you can see I push the chip and it doesn't move. So the chip is installed. Let's try this again. Plug this in. Detect. Normal, normal, normal. Right from AI. Okay. 
Look at that, burning complete. So I don't know what happened with the last ship. Let's detect again, normal, normal. I don't know. <laughs> yep, all right. Now let's go to the next step. Hopefully things keep working. So now we gotta put this sensor back into the housing of the of this thing. Now this does have this stuff on here, so let me actually get rid of it. Now this part is real sticky and doesn't come off in one piece. So I think I'm gonna just have to leave it. Or I can just try doing this. By the way, if you do get any other errors, or if you get that error and everything looks good with the IC placement, check the little gold wires. If any of those are broken and you disconnected a, a line completely, then it could be that's what's causing error. Like if you have uh, one of the four, uh, you know, the four lights in that sensor is damaged, then you'll see like normal, normal, and then one of them abnormal and the, like the other three normal. All right, that's, that's enough. I don't want to spend all nights doing that. All right, so now we got to get this back into the housing. Before I do that, let me... There's like a little piece here that's kind of stuck in the middle. All right, so let's, you know what? Let me get this out of this jig. Cause it kind of gets in the way. So now the hard part, oh look, piece of that bracket. So this bracket here is just a physical bracket. It's not needed for face ID. So that's fine if it comes off. Now remember the left side, careful with this shield cause it kind of doesn't fit properly so you may want to insert that side first and then kind of fold up you know what there's some underfill stuff on here let me clear that out really quick okay So this is the stuff that gets stuck between the flex and the metal housing. This is why it's a little difficult to pop it out. Now this back side of the flex is very thick, so it should be fine. Oops, I was out of view. All right, so we basically scraped away this. And, you know, every um, millimeter counts in here. It's very tight space. So let's insert this. Be careful, don't let your fingers touch the little gold pins inside the dot projector. All right, so I got it partially in. And then also careful not to touch the front camera lens with your dirty fingers. There it goes, it's in. And one thing I forgot to mention is to check the sensor before you separate to kind of get an idea of the spacing, but a tiny little gap, basically like this. This is what the spacing is from the sensor to the lens on this side. Not that exactly, but let me adjust it. All right. 
That thing is sliding out. All right, this is gonna be difficult to do by hand. So let's use a jig. So I use the action uh, alignment jig here, which I will also link down below since I couldn't do it by hand. Sometimes you get lucky and the bracket itself is, has tight pressure on it. So you can just, just push it into alignments, but not always. So this is where a jig like this comes in. There's other jigs, but I, I found this one works the best. Although it's, I would not say it's the best uh, tool and good enough for the job. And essentially you wanna get this rectangle thing inside the slot so that it kind of holds it in place but the jig itself is not that perfect you can see it's crooked there's a lot of wiggle room in there all right so goal here is to have a slight gap or like offset here but on this side should be a uh, straight flush or flush so the two the lens and the top of the dot projector should line up perfectly also from the sides so you do have to manually kind of push it so uh, it's kind of hard to see on the camera too this what I'm talking about because of the lighting but you see the two kind of boxes all right, so now we're gonna use the Mance uh, UV glue. And what I like to do is squeeze out a little drop and then get my tweezer some on the edge. And this is the tricky part because you gotta have it aligned. I'll just go with that. You want the, the glue to touch both the lens, the top side and the bottom side. This will ensure that it grabs everything once it cures. And then hit it with the UV lights. So I'll link all these in the video description. As always, if there's ever any tools that I don't link or forget to mention, just let me know. In the comments, where can I buy, you know, your Seek stand? Well, let me know you're looking for it and I will let you know. All right, so this side is kind of crooked, so I'm pushing it. And I'm going to try to squeeze. Uh, it keeps kind of shifting, but it's kind of close enough. And I don't have any more glue on my tweezer. I got a little bit. Let me dry that. Now maybe that'll. No, well, it's kind of aligned. This is the hardest part of the dot projector, to be honest. The alignment. This is the part that takes the longest because you gotta sometimes redo it multiple times. If you don't get it right. So I'm doing multiple layers here of UV glue. Remember the thinner layers you can do, multiple layers works better than one giant blob uh, thick layer because the UV will basically only cure the outside of a large blob and maybe the inside won't be as cured. Whereas if you do multiple thin layers, then when it's thinly layered, then more uh, Well, just like any anything else, you know, layering it works so much better than trying to do it in one one try. By the way, don't look at this with your eyeballs, the UV light, because it is bad for you. I don't want you guys going blind. And this is just for entertainment purposes. I do not guarantee anything. I am not a 
doctor. Uh, I got a big blob here, but I already had multiple layers. And you spread it out, it should be fine. So yeah, these claims have not been evaluated by the FDA, so do watch this at your own risk. All right, so that side's cured, this side is cured. Probably should have done more layers here, but oh well. Let's give this a test. All right, so uh, one thing I do want to mention is if you ever have alignment issues or something, there's extension flexes you can use, and you can test while it's in here before you glue it down to see if the alignment's good. But I've never done that, but I just want to mention it because I did see it in another video. So let's pop this out, and let's get this back into position. Now the nice thing about this method, also using the IC, is that the flex cable remains the same. So all the creases and folds are the OEM ones, which makes placing it back real easy. Whereas if you do the new flex, replacement flex method, you know, the flex is flat and is not, you know, creased for, for the housing. All right, so let's get everything plugged in. All right, let's add. All right, so I'm just being confident in my alignment and everything that I'm gonna screw the camera plate back in and pray I don't look like a fool when I test it and it doesn't work and I have to unscrew this. All right, so I got everything plugged in. It looks OEM like no one ever touched it. We just changed out the insides of that uh, dot projector, lattice, true depth camera, whatever you want to call it. All right, I have everything plugged in. Now for testing dot projector, I do recommend you close it shut, even though I'm not um, done with the repair. It, because you can have a situation where it works when the screen is not snapped in, but it doesn't work once you snap it in because of the pressure on the assembly and everything. So this is why I recommend uh, you snap it in, or at least the top portion, I press it down. It's fine if the lower part is still not attached. So let's go ahead and test this out. So one of the first things you'll notice, hopefully if nothing went wrong, true depth camera error is gone. Set up face ID. All right, let me if this works yep it works you can see it detected my face I'm going to do the whole scan and face ID scan complete let me set a pin code all right so here's a true test I'm looking away and take a look at the lock. As soon as I look, oh, I think it timed out. Look at the lock, unlocked. So yeah, it's working perfectly. All right, now one thing I haven't mentioned really throughout this whole video is where to buy it. So if you are looking to buy this, uh, this chip with the programmers and everything, go to DIYFixTool.com. So DIYFixTool actually didn't send me this. This time it was uh, JC themselves. So, but DIY Fixel does carry this part and they are a trusted vendor. So if you just go to their site and search, uh, let's see, JCID chip maybe. Yeah, you'll find it here, the dot projector chip. Here you can see one chip is $5, five are 24 55 or 10 pieces at 48.55 so if you buy 10 pieces it's basically four dollars and 85 cents per chip compared to the flex method which actually is down here so here you can see it's five dollars for a cable 
uh, you know, I can go up to, you know, eight dollars. And plus, you got to buy, you know, at least one of each, which is a huge pain. Um, and then the other thing you will need is the JC V1S or V1SE. There's two versions. The V1S is the older version. Uh, let's see if it's here. Of course not. So you can just search uh, JC V1S. And there's a few different uh, kind of bundles here. So it's probably this one you want to go with, jcv1s.matrix. Because you do want to get the programmer and the little board. You need this uh, module for the dot projector. So um, that's just the board. Oh, this has a full set. Yeah, so you'll probably have to see if you can get the V1S by itself and then separately buy just this board, which uh, should support all the different models. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the 13 series, this does not work for, there's a whole, uh, there's a different chip that that one uh, needs, which I'll actually be getting one here soon, and maybe I'll do a video if I can squeeze it in. Um, but yeah, also you can buy these programmers from other places, it's not just DIY Fix Tool. I have requested uh, I requested injured gadgets and wholesale gadget parts to order these uh, solutions so that you can buy them in the U.S. If you're international, DIY Fix Tool is probably your best bet. If you're in the U.S., uh, I would, if possible, get it from injured gadgets or uh, wholesale gadget parts, which I will link down below. So whenever, whatever sellers have it, you know, I'm sure you can find it on AliExpress as well. So before you go, I do want to mention the Repair Wiki. This is Lewis Rossman's website where it is a crowdsourced site where people can upload solutions for problems they discover or solutions they just know about. It doesn't necessarily have to be an original solution that was you know, made by you. It could be something you found online and you transcribe it into a written guide. So let's say you're watching this video and you want to write out the step-by-step -step process for this whole thing. You know, you can grab screenshots from this video to uh, write out the process. And if you can do these type of repair guides for the repair wiki, uh, we're willing to pay you money to create these. This is basically a project by Lewis Rossman where he wants to document, or he wants to create a database of solutions for repair shops. This is so that repair shops have a resource to go to to find solutions to common problems that they may run into. So whether it's an iPhone, iPad, you know, Samsung, LG, um, MacBook, uh, you know, name it, you name it, we want it documented there. So reach out to me, I'm the one in charge of finding contributors and managing that whole process to getting the, uh, the solutions and the guides uploaded to the site. So reach out to me through my website if you're interested in getting paid to create these guides. Um, you know, we need as much help as possible. And if you just want to look up solutions that are already present, you know, check out repair.wiki. So real quick, basically when you go to repair.wiki, you end up like here, near here on the left side of the navigation. Now we are working through a uh, update to the site. So it's a little more structured. Uh, this is something anyone can contribute. So as you can imagine, it, it does become like a mess. <laughs> Uh, but we are working on it. So you can see here some of the repair guides that I created. So if you're looking to solve a problem on an iPhone 7, you can find here uh, the whole process to diagnose and repair. Now, you know, if you can create guides in this quality, then we will pay you, you know, just name your price and we'll come to an agreement on that. So let me know. Also, if you want to support me directly, one great way to do that is with a t-shirt. I do sell t-shirts that are repair related like this one. I fix phones all day, every day. And I have some other cool designs as well. You know, Christmas is coming up and it's not too late to get yourself a ugly Christmas sweater, which I also have listed there as well. Uh, I will link this down below. You can also see it down on my YouTube uh, video description where you can see my shop. So check that out. Do me a favor and get yourself a shirt. Also check out my locals community. This is a site where I'm uploading different repair cases that come into my shop and kind of what I see, how I repaired it, you know, kind of a full breakdown of that process. And 
I will I do plan on making a supporter only live stream like on a regular basis I still got to figure out how that's gonna work but it's gonna be for supporters only so that's five bucks a month if you want to support me directly it is free if you just want to see my public post but I do plan on making more exclusive content once I get enough uh, followers on there. And lastly, if you do need this repair, reach out to me through my website, which I will link down below. And if you wanna see some more Face ID videos, check out this one right here. This is the other I2C method to do this dot projector repair. So if you wanna see how that differs from this method, check that out. So I appreciate all you guys who stuck around here till the end. I'll see you guys in the next one.